Hey guys, even here, and at 8 weeks out of Mr. Olympia, we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates and we are starting, as you can see, with a physique update of Nick Walker. Now, Nick has been very regular with posting his physique updates and he has been posting them under the same lighting at the same spot and in those physique updates, he really didn't look super impressive as much as he does in this most recent one because the lighting is completely different. Here you actually have some shadow and the photo quality is also better because the lighting is better. So I hope he's gonna continue making photos at this spot. I don't know if this is his home gym or not. Anyways, here he does look very good. And I think it's pretty safe to say at this point that Nick Walker is probably the biggest bodybuilder in that top 5, top 6 at a Mr. Olympia. Now that Big Ram is probably out of conversation. I mean, he was 5th at a Mr. Olympia last year. But at the Arnold, even though he was much better, he placed 4th behind Andrew Jack, which probably puts Big Remy out of that conversation of potential Mr. Olympia winners. There are quite a few of them, and I would say Big Remy is not one of them anymore. And out of those guys who can win the Mr. Olympia, Nick Walker is definitely the biggest guy, pound for pound at least. The other guys might be bigger, like Samson Dauda, because they are taller, they weigh more. Uh, Samson is like at around 300 pounds on stage, and Nick is competing in like, I don't know, 260s? Which is, again, very, very heavy for a guy of his height, I mean, he's 5'7". So, again, out of the guys who can win the Mr. Olympia, this is the mass monster, the biggest guy up there. And Mr. Olympia kind of is about the size, so... Actually, Nick Walker has, you know, good chances of winning the Mr. Olympia title. Is he gonna do it, though? Well, in my opinion, in order for him to be these guys, like Samson, like Derek, like Hadi, they need to be off. They need to be off, and Nick needs to be 100% on, because Nick has some glaring weaknesses, uh, structurally, especially... Also, some of his poses are not really that good, and the other guys can expose that, but if some of them are off, and he will be on, that's for sure, he can beat them, but what are the chances of all of them being off? Not very high, so Nick Walker is probably not going to win the Mr. Olympia, unfortunately, even though I'm a big fan of Nick, and I see the improvements that he has made. He definitely did make improvements. I think he's gonna be much bigger than the last time we saw him on stage, much fuller and probably in similar condition. I still don't really see him winning the Mr. Olympia. And also what Dorian Yates said in his post that historically the guys who did the Arnold Classic didn't improve as much for the Mr. Olympia as much as the guys who took a year off. So Derek Lancer probably improved more than Nick Walker and he already beat Nick last year. Hari Japan, I don't think he's improving anymore, I think he's just trying to maintain as much as possible throughout the year and then he just peaks for the show. So I believe Nick has bigger chances of surpassing Hari Japan, maybe even Samson Dauda, but as far as Tarek Lansford, I don't see that happening, probably not. So even though Nick Walker looks insane here, in my opinion, his best case scenario will probably be second at a Mr. Olympia. I mean, if that happens, that's still a progress. He was 5th the first year, 3rd the next year, and if he actually ends up in 2nd this year, that would be a success for him in my opinion. I mean, especially today with how, how tough the competition is, but once again, if you talk about him winning the Mr. Olympia this year, ah, I, I don't know, it's gonna be really tough, I don't think the chances are in his favor. What about this guy, Brandon Curry, your 2019 Mr. Olympia? Everybody seems to be forgetting about this guy for whatever reason. I mean, he was fourth last year at the Mr. Olympia, and he actually looked good. Like, he looked really impressive. He looked even improved, I would say. But I think they just missed the peak. They really missed the mark with conditioning. Like, he was super full. He was probably bigger than ever, but he wasn't conditioned enough. And hopefully they realize what the mistake was and maybe, just maybe they will fix it. Now, in this new, most recent physique update, he looks pretty much the same, like every year. I mean, every year his coach Abdullah posts the same photo, basically. I mean, this is a new photo. He says in the comments there that it's a photo from a couple of days ago, but it always looks like this. Every time, every year, at around 8 weeks out, they post a photo and it looks pretty much the same. Now, I was curious what they're gonna do this year, because I heard that Brandon went to Kuwait uh, much earlier than he ever, ever goes to Kuwait to prep for Mr. Olympia, which probably means he's driven, he wants to win it again. 
and I thought maybe they will, you know, wait and just show up better than ever and potentially, I don't know, win the Mr. Olympia? Is that a possibility still? Maybe. I don't know, but maybe. And uh, I thought either that's gonna happen or sometime soon they're gonna post a physique update that looks crazy. And again, it looks similar, like every year, basically, especially his upper body, but as far as his legs, I think they look even smaller than usual. And that was always the biggest issue with Brandon Curry. He still managed to win that Mr. Olympia 2019, but like, who was his competition? William Bonek and then Hardy, who wasn't at his best. So that was probably the weakest Mr. Olympia, like, in a, in a long, long time. And Brandon managed to win that one. Is he gonna ever win the Mr. Olympia again? I mean, if he won it once, it's not impossible for him to win it again. But, like, because of those legs, like, that's a really flaring weakness. And once again, it seems to me that, like, his outer sweep melted even more. It's smaller now. I think his legs are just overall smaller. I mean, his adductors were always good. That's something that could grow on his legs, but his outer sweep... His vastus lateralis is just not there, and with age, you know, it starts to look worse and smaller. And he's turning 41 soon, so at the Mr. Olympia, he's gonna be 41. So he's definitely not a youngster anymore. He did manage to beat uh, Samson Dauda last year. Will he be able to do that once again this year? No, I don't see that happening again. And also, like, he beat Big Remy, but Big Remy was beaten by Andrew Jack. So, will, be, will Brandon Curry be able to beat Andrew Jack? I don't know. And it's not like Brandon Curry looks so much worse. He looks pretty similar. He'll probably look pretty similar. Potentially even better than last year because of conditioning, if he fixes that issue. But still, the other guys are progressing so fast. There is so much talent in that top 10 at the Mr. Olympia. It's crazy. Which makes 2023 Mr. Olympia super exciting, and I'm really excited to watch and see what happens. And it's not only because of who's gonna win the Mr. Olympia, but who's gonna beat who after that? You know, who's gonna place where? It's gonna be super exciting, the top 10 is gonna be insane. We also got a little physique update of Marcelo D'Angelis, we got a couple of others as well, HorseMD, his uh, Instagram nickname. Uh, he's coach Ramilo Sarcho, as you can see, and uh, he, after he tried to compete in classic physique, uh, I think like two years ago, he decided to never try and, and make the weight for classic and to really focus on open bodybuilding and focus on open bodybuilding he did. I mean, look at this guy right now. He blew up. He really blew up. He really grew a lot. And like he has those really good aesthetics, really good uh, shape and muscle bellies. And once this guy is completely, you know, built up, once he really reaches that level of muscularity that is necessary for like Mr. Olympia level, and once he gets in good condition, I believe he can be a top contender. I think he can do really well, especially today when the aesthetics are really appreciated much more than before. So with his shape, with his aesthetics, with his structure, and with this newly added muscle, combined with hopefully good conditioning, this guy is going to be doing really well. I don't know when he's going to compete, but he doesn't look like he's going to be ready soon. So probably next year, or maybe in some of the post-Olympia shows, who knows. But it's going to be very interesting to finally see this guy compared to the top open pros. We are less than a week out of Spain Pro, and as far as classic physique, it's gonna be very interesting. We're gonna see Wesley Wissers and a couple of other guys like Terence Ruffin, but Wesley Wissers, I don't know if he was ever this conditioned. His new coach is, again, that same coach that coaches Urs Kalecinski and now Nathan Diasha. His name is Stefan, uh, his nickname on Instagram, as you can see, is Boss of Outlaw. So, yeah, I think he's doing a really good job lately. He's really bringing his guys in great condition. And Wesley Wissers, that was always his issue, like his conditioning. Last year at the Mr. Olympia, he kind of figured it out. And he didn't lose the fullness in his legs. But I think this time around, he's going to be even more conditioned, much more shredded. And hopefully, his legs will stay. Hopefully, he built some muscle in those legs. And hopefully, his new coach knows how to get him conditioned without sacrificing the fullness in his weakest body part, which is his legs. But as far as conditioning, again, I don't think I ever saw Wesley showing this kind of dryness in the glutes, in the triceps, in the back as well. 
So I think he's bringing his best shape of his life, but he has some tough competition. But I'm definitely cheering for him, I wanna see him win, I wanna see him on that Mr. Olympia stage, I think this physique deserves to be up there, but we'll see if he does deserve or not, we'll see uh, in less than a week. We also got a physique update, a posing video of Behru Stabani, who still didn't get the visa. And look at this freaking guy, at 8 weeks or like 7.5 weeks out of Mr. Olympia, he looks insane, like he looks like a top 10 material, potentially even higher than 10 but yeah it seems like he's not gonna get that visa once again like last year he is qualified he's prepping his coach is milo sharchev i know he's gonna be in great shape i know he can really do some damage with this kind of muscle with this look with this shape with this crazy symmetry and proportions and everything really i know he can do super well but I don't know if he's gonna get that visa. Anyways, guys, whatever you think, tell me in the comment section down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to support this channel, just click on the link down below in the caption of this video. Browse for the old school lab supplements. If you need some supplements, you can buy them. Use the code EVAN, you get a 15% discount, and I get something from it as well. So thank you guys so much for all your support. All the best, guys, and bye-bye.